No one likes to go into those sexual harassment video trainings at work or to learn about the hostile work environment. You think it's a big waste of time. Well, ask Bill O'Reilly, ask Roger Ailes. I'm sure they might tell you something a little bit different. And Chris Mason, an attorney at Jennings Strauss and Sam, and he is here to tell us a little something different about that too. So welcome. Thank you, Monica. It's nice to be here. Yes. Yeah, so we know that Bill O'Reilly and Roger Ailes have been in the news lately because, you know, they were naughty boys, so to speak. And uh, sexual harassment, workplace harassment is a big deal, but I don't think a lot of people really think about the subtleties or the little things about it. Yeah, and that's definitely true. Not only, you know, are we aware of the fact that, that employers and supervisors within a company can't solicit sex or, or try to solicit sexual favors, but there's a lot of subtleties that, that range from from employees talking about sex or sexuality in the workplace to some of the sexual conduct that may take place outside of the workplace but then also finds its way into the workplace as well. You know, you, you mentioned right there that when you, if, if we were working together and I said, hey, you want to go out or I walk by, wow, you look great in that suit today. I think a lot of people realize that could be some kind of sexual harassment or unwanted advances. But the, the little subtle things, like if you and I were talking about something and someone overheard, could that be some kind of sex harassment? It, it really could, and that's a very, very good point. We all know uh, when we practice in this area that sexual harassment is only sexual harassment if, if it's unwanted. Mm -hmm. If it's not unwanted, it, it's not unlawful. But the problem that, that happens, and this comes up really with a lot of frequency, is when you have two employees who have this kind of dialogue or flirtatious behavior between them, if other people have to endure it too, they have to witness it, they have to live through it, they have to experience it, that may create an unwanted environment for them. And so we have to be very sensitive to how this kind of behavior impacts the entirety of the workforce. So what about, uh, we talk about in the office, what about when you leave the office? Isn't it just kind of fair game? I mean, people say First Amendment, I can say whatever I want, I can do whatever I want. Can you get in trouble that way? You certainly can, and it can create a lot of headaches for employers because we see that exact kind of behavior lead to workplace drama and workplace problems. And what happens is you have workers who may be out um, at a company event or at some sort of a sales convention or something along those lines and they think, hey, I'm out of the office. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I feel like doing. This isn't a problem. Yeah. But that's exactly when a lot of these relationships develop into huge issues. Somebody sexually harasses somebody else. Somebody invites somebody back to their room. And then suddenly we have a problem that seeped its way into the workplace. And employers can definitely be on the hook for that. So they need to be on the lookout for it as well. So you talk about conventions or a, a company event. What if you and I worked together and we decided to just go hit the bar for happy hour and then we have a couple other coworkers that maybe join us and then something happens within that group? Could they get in trouble for that too? They certainly can. And it's not just because the, the, the events that take place outside of the workplace may cause problems, but they have a tendency to seep their, their way back into the workplace to cause problems. Mm -hmm. if, if Bob and Tom are doing something in the, the bar and they're, they're hitting on Sally, um, she now feels uncomfortable around them, that's got to find its way back into the workplace. They have to work together and because of that event it's now affected their working relationship. It's like you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube uh, no can't. matter where it came out at. That's right. Once it happens it's, it's too hard to, too difficult to put back. If, if this can capture big corporations like Fox News National and other big companies like that, is there anything that the smaller companies here in Arizona or the mom and pops can do to kind of protect themselves against this type of thing? Yeah, the, the real starting point is to make sure that this isn't happening in their workplace and that they adopt a sound policy. That, that's the starting employ, point uh, really with any employer is that they have a policy in place that they implement it, that they teach their employees, particularly their supervisors, their managers, on the expectations, they take it seriously, and then that they enforce the policy. When the policy is violated, they investigate, and they, they issue immediate discipline when it's necessary. So do they need to do one of those high produced videos or what can work for them? Uh, yeah, you, you definitely don't need a video, uh, for instance, like the, the Tom Brady video from Saturday Night Live that right, we saw many right? years ago. You, <laughs> employers don't need to go to those great lengths. Employers can, can bring in somebody to train, they can train directly themselves. I do think training is important to get the message out, um, although interestingly the EEOC has found that, that overtraining really doesn't do any good, mm. that, that you need to get the message, but once the message gets out it's really about enforcement at that point. 
All right. Well, if you need more information about creating these policies, you can go see Chris Mason at Jennings Strauss and Salmon. And we'll be back with more on Arizona Daily Mix.